Hello everyone. Yesterday we ventured into a tall desert and we took care of Yasma, clearing the way into the tomb down below into King's West, where Prophet Zul, he plans to resurrect Rezar, the very first king. Welcome to the tomb of the first troll king. Wish I could be there to greet you myself. My power has already taken root, binding the ancient spirits to the will of my master. With Gahoon empowering him, Zul, time and time again, he sets the spears of the past against us, while the tomb's very own defenses, like animated guardians and purification constructs, they don't take kindly to visitors either. Few places in Zandalar are more sacred than King's Rest. Every king, conqueror or tyrant who has held control of the Zandalari Empire, they're housed within this great city of the dead to protect and honor not only their bodies, but also their spirits. Entry has historically been restricted solely to the Zandalari priesthood and royalty, but as Zul's dark magic winds his way through the tomb, we have no choice but to venture in. Our first test is that of the Golden Serpent. By turning the Serpentine Seal, liquid gold starts flooding into the room, and by the time that we clear out Zul's summoned minions, the serpent actually spawns. Now this is not the first time that King's Rest has come under attack. Many millennia ago, there was a foolish troll who tried to summon Hakkar the Soul Flayer to the island, and Hakkar, he is known as the Loa of Blood, but not to be confused with Cahoon. He's also quite a dark Loa, wishing for more and more blood sacrifices, and Hakkar seems to be very difficult to take care of, as during Classic, we had to deal with his darkness. An allegiance was formed between the Zandalari and Heroes of Azeroth, and once more with the Cataclysm revamp, as Prophet Zul, he united the troll tribes including the Guru Bashi, only this time we actually saved Hakkar from Jindo. Now in response to that foolish troll who tried to summon a car to the island, the priest of Zandalar, they created a mighty construct to defend this tomb. That is what the Golden Serpent is, and it has stood against intruders ever since, judging who is worthy to enter the sacred halls. It does so by spitting gold at us, which leaves behind a pool of gold on the floor, a pool from which the serpent then can call on ads. If these ads actually reach it, they'll grant a shield and increase its damage done, so you want to make sure to drop the pools as far away from the boss as possible, while also avoiding its AoE spin attack. After passing the first test, we move through the beautiful design dungeon, where the spirit of Zul, he shows up again, this time resurrecting the kings and queens in the sepulchre of the Dahazi. Apologies for the pronunciation. We have Queen Patla, friend of beasts, scourge of her enemies, beloved by her descendants. King Timalji and Queen Wazi, never have two rulers shared such a love of power. King Rahuai and his trusted advisors Atu and Mbara, long did he rule, painful was his fall. And then King Aaku. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. And then King Aaku, by blood he reigned, by blood he died. Thousands of years ago, a blood contagion almost wiped out the Zandalari. As the dead choked their temples, golems were constructed to dispose of the diseased bodies. I'm sure it will have no problem disposing of you. That foolish troll summoning Akar, it caused a plague to tear through the empire, killing thousands of trolls and began one of the most terrifying periods within Zandalar's history. This tale, it might actually be inspired by the days of World of Warcraft Classic, in which adventurers they faced off against Akar, they could actually carry their corrupted blood debuff into the capital cities, which then killed thousands upon thousands of innocent players. There have even been studies done on its progression, which is really, really cool, but for the Zandalari, not so much. To deal with the outbreak, they decided to no longer have mortals deal with their fallen. Instead, they summoned golems to do the grim work of preservation and burial. Your bodies bear the infection. The blood curse must be purged. Machimbari Embalmer is a construct enchanted to entomb the ancient kings of Zandalar, and he uses his powers to entomb players and prepare them for eternal rest. It's really cute how random party members can end up in a sarcophagus, wiggling desperately to draw your attention to get them out again. The construct also tries to drain our fluids and burn the corruption, which is kinda interesting. It makes you wonder if he's malfunctioning, if, if Zul turned him against us, or if there's truly a taint of the blood curse within our bodies. The dead. Must be preserved. Mysteries for another day. Onwards to the Council of Tribes. Now in Zandalar history, there was a period of time in which no single emperor could rule all of Zandalar. After a period of civil war, the heads of three families, they formed an uneasy coalition and they tried to rule the empire together. Though they did not often agree, there was a peace in Zandalar, if only briefly. The doctor is it. 
Zanazide wise, born to rule, beset by enemies, and resilient enough to endure a civil war that few others did. Though he never saw the others as his equal, he nevertheless saw the value in keeping his enemies close. With the powers of the elements, totems, and a lovely poison nova, he tries to take us on, but we kick him back into his urn, and this does not actually remove him from the fights. Similar to the spirit kings from the Mokshon vaults, their spirits will linger and occasionally do the most powerful effects. The order that you fight them in is also random, but for us, the second one was Kula the Butcher. Please bury me far from these imbeciles. This fight requires skill. Something you are lacking. Kula the Butcher, cruel enough to earn her name, yet clever enough to know who needed butchering. Often outnumbered, her strategy and keen eye for timing, it made it a force to fear. She loves to throw around her weapons on the battlefield and chop off the heads of her enemies, but she too is sent back to her urn. Finally, we have Aka Ali the Conqueror. My head will make a fine trophy. You all as worthless in death as you was in life. I'm gonna head up. Here comes the pain! She is the bloodthirsty princess. She challenged all who courted her and was never defeated, never showed mercy to those that she vanquished. Her brutality earned her power beyond reckoning and a legacy beyond question. Her might is so great that we need to line up and share the full brunt of her blows. But we're working together, we are able to take out the council. Somebody My is losing rage. Fear undying. This is the resting place of the first king of Zandalar. The Tsar was stubborn, but now he serves. Silence, prophet of lies! I spent my life resisting your master, only for you to bind me to his will in death. These intruders will die, but I need not listen to your prattling while I make it so. Complain all you like, my king. But you should have realized, there was no escape in Gahoon. The accidentally created Old Blood God, it has been a problem for the Zandalari since the days that the Empire was formed, since the days of the first king. We finally get a chance to take on the Shadow Azul without it running away or resurrecting undead forces to do its fighting for him. Now here lies the Zar, the founder and first king of Zandalar. He who led an exodus of his people out of the muck and mire and built a city of gold. He who raised us beyond the curse of blood. He who defied the Dark One. He who built an empire. The first tamer of raptors. The warrior undefeated. Hunting season has begun! The first king doesn't actually like Zul, nor does he want to fight for him. But he doesn't really have a choice, as the prophet's dark magics, it holds him under control. I will shred your- Come! Come, my dear Raban! It's feeding time! His skill with the blade is mighty, and at 80% health, he calls for his hunting raptor Raban to join the fray. Even death cannot break the bond between us, my pets. Now feast to Zala! I will shred your flesh! At 60% health, he mounts to Zala, his loyal steed, who protects him with Eternal Guardian, which means that all damage done to the Zar is redirected to the Zala. Enough! You have earned the honor of dying by my hand! If you're drooling over the mount, like I am, don't worry, the king does have a chance to drop it. Finally, at 40% health, he activates the spear launchers in his room, which continues to fight at us until the Tsar is defeated. You have broken Zul's hold! I serve that swine no longer! You have freed me from a cruel fate, but Zul is merely a puppet in a larger plan. Even now his master gathers power. Zul will not rest until all the world is in the Blood God's grip. For the sake of Zandalar, and for your kingdoms as well, you must stop him. King Rastakan will be pleased to hear that he won't be dethroned by the first king anytime soon, but Zul is still out there. His master Gahun wants to be set free, and the Dark Prophet will do anything to make it so. 
that, however, is a tale for another time. So for now, thank you very much for watching, everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time, guys, see ya!